Hey guys, this is Chris. This week we're going to be taking a look at why it's important to have variants in your game and how Jordan used Egypt's lack of variants to win in the match in the Grand Prix Final. And for those of you who are new to my channel and want to learn more about Taekwondo sparring, feel free to hit that subscribe button and the bell and we have new things coming out every week. With that, let's get started. The blue player here, Al Jabarti, has multiple weapons, not quite as tall as red, but very crafty. The red player here from Egypt has a very, very good front leg, very, very good at deep attacks. throws that front leg around like Saeed. And exactly what I just said. Now let's see if he continues that pace. Now at this point in the match, I want you guys to notice that Blue has been dictating the pace of the match so far. He's been the one creeping in, he's been the one inching and trying to initiate most of the offense off of Red. Red has only been throwing his front leg and he's been mostly stationary and content letting Blue push the pace of the match. Yeah, you gotta shut that down real quick because those are where... Took the gold and then the fourth innings is the men's man is 80. El Sharabati showing some power of his own there. Yeah, I, and I like that turn. Now I want you guys to take note here that Blue is attempting to spin here because Red has shown multiple times in this first round already that his counter is mostly just a front leg lift. There's no, no fake involved, normally doesn't clinch, doesn't move back or forward, usually just in place. Now as a general rule of thumb, you want to vary your defense and offense for that matter, but defense to where sometimes you close the distance, sometimes you stay in place and counter, and sometimes you move back. Variation in doing these things allows you to not really get trapped or spun. And usually if people are starting to spin against you, that's a telltale sign that you are doing your move way too often. Now this here is a good punch by that's Egypt a, coming in to take advantage of the timing a, reset. That's a huge punch. Watch Blue, he's gonna motion, 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 and try and get Red to use that main weapon. And the reason he's doing that is he wants to gauge the distance and timing that Red can use that weapon at. The reason it's important to have variation on your kicks is because, for example, Red hasn't used this back leg. Blue knows all he has to do is watch for this front leg coming either long to the body or a deep attack to the face. Touch gloves in this one straight away from El Shirabat. Blue does this attack because he knows Red likes to stand in place and use his front leg when he defends. Because of this information, Blue goes straight for Red's face at the start of the match. Watch it again. Straight for the face. I like the gutsy play. Something I want you guys to notice is that it doesn't seem like Red has a second kick after his first. And so Blue here is about to capitalize on Red not following after his first kick. At this stage, you can't afford it. You don't have enough time. A beautiful defensive front leg to the face on Saif's inward motion. And again, exact same play. And this here, it's directly after Red kicks the first time. Blue takes the opportunity after to go to his face. Red misses. Back leg was slow. Go to his face. Defensive front leg to the face on Saif's inward motion. And again, exact same play. And the play has taken it away. It wasn't. So keep in mind, this is the World Taekwondo Grand Prix Final. So don't count Egypt out just yet. 
plus the attack, and El Shirabati not happy just to take the lead, extended as it will. Oh, a huge turn. Back. Here we can see how variation helps your attack. The reason this works is because Egypt has consciously or unconsciously been attacking Jordan at about the same distance. And this Nadaban, this jumping turning 45, covers so much more distance than normal, Jordan doesn't expect it. Not happy just to take the lead, extended as it will. Oh, a huge... Not happy just to take the lead, extended as it will. Oh, a huge... Oh my god. Once again, we see Blue here exploring the fact that Red hasn't buried his defense in terms of distance at all, which is why Blue is able to set up these kinds of spin kicks. It's unfortunate it didn't connect, but it's definitely a tool that you can use if someone is too constant with their own front leg. In general, we feel that Red going into third round isn't really going to be seen on too many weapons because he's been using that front leg even against blue spinning on him already even against those different headshots red hasn't really changed his game or his approach that much so we have a general guess that that's what red's sitting on and there isn't much after that if you're red looking at blue the answer for the other players how do you answer his pressure how do you answer that he's coming up with solutions already against my main weapon those are the kind of things that you have to try and answer second round going into third especially as red I like this sequence because it shows Blue's a little too wrapped up in creating the offense. He forgets how deep Red's kick can go. I also like Blue going right back at Red's face, expecting what he did in round two. Uh, Red's hands just really good getting in the way. Always respect what your opponent has, but don't fear what they have. Find the counter to it. At this point in time, I feel it'd be prudent for Red to start counter pressuring Blue, pretending like he's going to go on offense pretending like he might go in at any time, and using that plus some motions to bury his defense. Red here, able to get a good point based on his last couple kicks, able to sneak something in. Let's watch from the earlier part. In this first little series, we see Red lift here a little light to the body, changing his pace from super fast to about medium. In the second part here, we see Red fast speed to the face, his bread and butter. In this third little series after this reset, he's able to get a point on Jordan because he has changed not only pace, but he's also changed targeting. He's going to go Fast speed I think he'll be able to, to the body some opportunities here in the last minute. And there it is. Changing the target of the kick is enough for him to score. We also see Red here going after the face a little bit more often because he knows by virtue that blue has to be coming in. And so the thoughts of retreating far, far back, not as in play. It looks like Red is very comfortable from playing from ahead. He's varying his attacks a little bit more in terms of depth. As you can see earlier, he went deep for Blue's face. And this time he went short, knowing Blue might is probably going to slide in against him now. He's throwing a couple cuts in there. This is the kind of defense that would have been ideal. Red, nice attempt. Blue, good job going in the face. I can't really fault Red for letting that one through because it's a weapon that Blue hasn't shown all matches. So unless he's shown it in a previous match, there's no way for him to have really expected that thing to come up. Now, only one point behind, you're about to see Blue use the information he got from the other rounds to score his final point. Once again, what are those things? Red likes to stand in place. Red also likes to use his front leg. Red does almost exactly as planned. Check On the engagement, the lifts his leg in place, blue kicks that. twice, doesn't attempt to move forward. He lifts his leg, goes twice for that shot. Delivering the headshot lands in the last 
second, the Jordanian goes with the air shot, lands it, Saif Isa responded, can he find an answer? The referee separates him, but the clock will separate them both. El Sharabati with his maiden gold medal, maiden Jordan. The two biggest principles to take away from this. Number one, in general, it's good to be dictating the pace of the match. The reason for this is because if you're dictating the pace of the match and you're the one pressuring, you're creating opportunities for yourself rather than waiting for opportunities to happen to you. If Blue wasn't pressuring Egypt, if Blue wasn't pressuring player Red, there's a good chance he may never had enough information to set up those in-place face kicks. Major sparring concept number two, use variation. Now when I say use variation, this has come in different ways. It can come in technique, change of technique you're using, front leg, back leg, etc. This can come in target changes, backside, front side, those kind of deals. Or three, this can come in distance changes. We saw in the match that Red didn't vary his defensive distance change very often, and therefore Blue was able to spin against him and set up his head kicks. As a general rule of thumb, if someone spins against you and almost hits you two or three times, that means you're doing things too often. You need to use more variance in your fighting to keep things more camouflaged. So that's it for me this week, guys. I hope you got something valuable out of this. If you stayed and watched the whole video, congratulations. You're very serious about learning this stuff. I appreciate your viewer time. I hope I was able to provide you enough value. With that being said, see you next week.